Welcome to Diversity Conversations, where we engage in thought-provoking dialogue to identify leadership solutions to today's most challenging conflicts. Stream live each week, Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m., hosted by diversity, equity, and inclusion strategist and CEOs Eric Ellis and Tommy Lewis. Join us and add your voice to this engaging diversity conversation. Good morning, greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, the United States, and the world. My name is Eric Ellis. I'm the president and CEO of Integrity Development Corporation, and I'm joined this morning by my good friend and brother, Tommy Lewis, president and CEO of Make It Plain Consulting. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Tommy. What's going on? It is. I see you. We're about to do it tomorrow. Yes, sir. We're going to get some chipping in today. We we do. That's killing me. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to have so many strokes on chipping. I don't want to come out of tomorrow with a hundred. Right. Try not to get to a hundred. I want to get your age wise, but I do not want my score to get to hundred. This is golf, not basketball. Eric. This is golf, not basketball. <laughs> my numbers is creeping up, boy. Mine are like everything else. If you ain't eating right, numbers creep up. If you ain't getting no exercise, blood pressure. Yeah. All the numbers. Yeah, those are all bad. All bad. So. I'm going to go. Because nobody cares how you play. They don't see nothing good shots anytime. Nope. 105. <laughs> 101 probably works. No. Right. Right. I'll take 99. I'll take 99. I don't like it at all. I really want to get back to the 80s. Hey, get back to the clubhouse. Folks just got, you know, squiggly lips. Just... And everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, uh, he had a hard, a tough hole there. Tough, tough, tough day. I don't know all the details, but he got a nine on the hole. Right? So. We need to talk about the weather when we, when yeah, we talk about or it. just get in the car. Just, just. <laughs> it but I've gotten into these big numbers now, mm-hmm. and I realize that we have to stand next to the number and take a picture. And take a picture. <laughs> You got to own who you are, man. Yeah. And I told, uh, I was telling somebody yesterday, I tell my brother, wouldn't I said, it's a good thing to have to stand next to subpar performances. Yeah. And I realized that I haven't had a lot of experience with that, that we've been fortunate across our lives that for the most part, we've had a lot of success in a number of different things and so when you have to show up post a bad number and own that uh that's a a beautifully humbling experience that we all we all need yeah i think it's a lesson in life eric uh that uh, all of us are going to uh, get to some numbers Mm -hmm. um for 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 me i think it's a blessing to get to certain age numbers Mm -hmm. Right. When you get to 50, 55, 60, 65, right. 70, right. 75, those numbers are gifts. Yeah, they are. Right. And there are some realities attached to those numbers. And if we could still find peace and happiness in those numbers where we are, I think we will be better off uh, collectively and individually. Right. It's right. just a hey, here. Here's where my body uh, is. Here's what it can do. Right. My mind remembers when I was 21, yep. 24, 28. I right. was in my prime. Right. Uh, but my body says, no, you're at a different number, right? You cannot stretch the entire way to your toes, but you can go to your knees to maybe your thighs. So just take it there. <laughs> right. Hey, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to put forth a challenge. Tommy, I'm going to challenge us to kind of join in this together. And I'm going to put forth this challenge to our community that I believe that the aging process, not the numerical aging process, but the physical and mental aging process, a lot of that is a choice. Mm. And I believe that we can make decisions that we don't want to cave in to our body's desire to do less. Mm. Uh, I know that, you know, I said it to Judy just casually the other day, Tommy. I said, look, I said, I think that age, because a lot of times you lose your desire to pick your knees up higher. Uh, you know, you just start relaxing into, I I, I want to 
you know, uh, park my car as close to the door as I can, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. And uh, because you, you, you're saying to some extent, what's it all for? Right. And we knew when we were athletes and we were working out to jump higher, to run faster, we had an objective. Yeah. As you get older, if you're not careful, you start caving into those things. And mentally, uh, you know, a lot of you may not be reading as much, but I think that we have an obligation to keep our minds sharp and to keep our bodies sharp. Because, Tommy, here's, here it is right now. In this, in this day and time that we live in, many of us, our children are, are if they're going to get married, they're getting married much older. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be much older when they have children. And I mean, picking up a grandbaby, well, and that's looking like a real task right now. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to say, Tommy, that that's something that you and I need to join together in is to get some kind of routine that we can just check in with each other and yeah. say, Tommy, are you stretching? Yeah. You know, and things like that. So that three days a week that we're working on that, I'm going to ask our community to join with us in that endeavor, because I think that we've got to be as sharp mentally and physically as we can. And it's not just to look cute anymore. It's really about life and the quality of life. And so I know that I do better in team relationships. Yeah, that's an excellent challenge, Eric. I appreciate that. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, and research also shows that uh, in the mornings when we first wake up, we should stretch. Okay. Right. That our bodies are for the most part dormant. Mm -hmm. There's some movement, but we're, we're not really moving. Mm -hmm. uh, and so stretching in the morning, maybe grabbing some intentional maybe low impact stretches okay. throughout right. the course of the day right. and then close out. So it may not be that full back stretch right now, but when we're in that chair, you know, go ahead and lean forward, good. get the back out, mm -hmm. right? Go ahead and stand up if you will. Uh, and so over time, we may not be back to our young 20s days, but we may stretch out a little bit of ourselves and, and then our own peace and understanding and get our, our body remembers mm -hmm. what it had. Right, right. It right. remembers what it used to be. Right. And, and sometimes we can be intentional to get it closer back to what we can work with right and i've even been dreaming tommy about going back to a, a gym okay and a basketball goal now in my dreams yeah. it's just me and the goal yeah it ain't no people there <laughs> yet <laughs> so i believe that is a good just it's a reasonable dream it's not no people it's me playing one-on-one -on -one with myself <laughs> <laughs> what, I noticed, what, what I noticed the last time is that my three came down to a layup and it was still, I mean, it's still like, ooh, all these muscles? It takes all those muscles to shoot a bit of layup. <laughs> well, I took a lot of pride in scoring on people. It's a disaster right now. But I did have the dream. Yeah. In the dream, I was uh, back. You end up as a coach. As <laughs> a <laughs> coach myself. That might be a whistle. Line drill, Alice. Okay. I just sit here with the whistle. <laughs> and imagine myself doing whiz friends. Oh, man. Talk about your week, man. My week was good, Eric. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about, just very briefly, uh, last night. Okay. I'm going to talk about last night in oh, the yeah. NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. Final four, we had some great games. Absolutely. South Carolina versus North Carolina State. We had University of Connecticut, UConn, uh, and they were playing Iowa. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, Eric, two things. One, I travel a lot, and I get on a lot of planes. Mm -hmm. And I'm very fortunate, I have been fortunate during this time where wherever I'm going, for the most part, I will see a basketball team okay. coming through. Right. And you can always tell the college basketball team they're they're wearing the same thing. Right. Right. They have the headphones on. Right. They may have a small roller bag or a duffel bag, and they've actually had their you know team you know pack right. their larger bags. For the women in college, Division One, they're big women. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, Eric, man. I have walked by a women's team okay. and realized that 6'7 for a man is 6'7. 
right? Right. As I'm looking up at six to seven women, I'm looking up. Right. Right. Uh, and I realize, oh my goodness, and they're athletic, balling, balling. Right. So they got the gait. Right. 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 All, right, all right, that. right. And 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 I go in my head like back in the day, boy. You know, I was a point guard. I could do this. Right. I don't know. Say, oh, they if, might be smacking. They this might guy. be getting it. Right. They might be getting it. Right. Arms come in here, and then when they reach out, it's like, oh, that's seven feet. Right. Right. And so yesterday, watching the game, I have a great respect and admiration to the skill level, the intelligence, the competitiveness, as well as the still the uh, uh, I would like to say naivete. Yeah. Of young people, yeah, yeah, right? I love they're, that they're out there playing for the good of the game, the good of the team, right. for the championship, right? And it, it's not about winning and getting money. Mm -hmm. It's not about the salary of getting paid to play, right? Uh, you know, folks get paid for their likeness, but that's not getting paid to play. It's very genuine, yeah. And last yeah. night, these women were balling. Right, that NC State uh South Carolina game, first half, I said uh South Carolina might go down. Yep. Because the guards for NC State were so cold. I mean, it was pop, pop, pop. Wait. Oh, what? Man. That's how you're gonna do it? Step back, step back. Bucket. Blow box. Yep. Shake you. Mm. That was one of my moves. Yep. Dip you and go. Yep. Get to the rim. You ain't even nowhere close. I yep. said, uh oh, it's gonna be a long night. Yep. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I love about that South Carolina game. First of all, I love Coach Don State. You too. That's a bad sister, right? Yes, there. sir. She is a boss. Yes. She's a general. <laughs> she don't take no stuff. And she loves those girls. Yeah. And she has respect for all women. And I see her, we now have a powerful black female coach on a world stage teaching every single time she opens yep. her mouth. Yep. Every time. When she was being interviewed by her former player, uh, Boston. Yep. Boston. And, and she was being interviewed by her. She was just complimenting her. Saying, girl, we so proud of you. Mm -hmm. you, you look yep. at you doing your thing. Yep. And see, people don't see that enough. They don't see women of color, people of color that are admiring each other, complimenting each other, pulling for each other, having great values. You know, she loves her faith is important to her. Mm -hmm. She loves all the girls. She's winning, uh, coaching for legacy of the program and the women that went before this. Yes. Uh, when she got on the panel with her, we just have never seen that. Yeah. Somebody that just said, y'all making us look good. Y'all could do anything. When y'all going into coaching? Yeah. And I was just watching her swag, but I also was watching the technical aspects of a genius coach that knows how to put this away. Yep. She's like, no, girls, look, I don't lose. Mm -hmm. When you came to my program, mm -hmm. I don't lose. And the way we don't lose is we don't play dumb basketball. Yep. So when I stand up here by the midcourt, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Get that clock up out of here. Don't do nothing stupid. You know how I roll. Yep. Watch it. What? Eric, oh, yep. Yep. Put it away. Third, fourth quarter. Put it away. Still coaching hard. She said it in the break that the the team has a tendency to wane when they twenty something up. Yep, twenty something up, and the coaches need to coach up. And so defense Ooh. was their strength. Ooh. She jumped Ooh. off the bench that one time when the defense was breaking down. Right. Had her in the third, fourth quarter. Right. No, we got this. What are y'all doing? Don't do it. Don't do it. And you know, the players, you know, like I shot. Like if you was like that on, yep. on, 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 uh, on a gurney, clear. Right? Get you back. Boom. Oh, okay. We we still playing. So oh, coach, you're trying to win this game and the next one? Right. Right. We were just in the moment. Right. Like, right. Look, we don't uh, celebration mode. Celebration. We don't do that yet. We don't do that we yet. Got minutes on the clock. Yep. Oh, oh masterful to watch. Yeah. And I just sat back. I love the notoriety that the women's game is getting. Uh, and hopefully 
the pay for uh, professional women's basketball is going to be chasing this. We know that the cost to uh, go to the women's games is now higher than the cost of the men's games. It's the talk of this March Madness. Yeah, it is. I mean, we barely know who's playing on the guy's side. Yeah. Because we're so interested in what's happening on the women's side. And now we have the game that everybody's in the world has been looking for. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, I've seen, I've seen all these teams now play the best in the world. So yesterday's second half, I had not seen South Carolina play that well. Yeah. That was the best I've ever seen them play. And so the first half was consistent with what they've been doing in the tournament. Just kind of, uh, you know, up, down, up, down, you know. But we we saw some things featured. But uh, uh, and then Caitlin, we've seen Caitlin go from dropping 40 on LSU mm -hmm. in the heat of thing, mm -hmm. dropping 40 to getting sixth first half yesterday, ended up with 21, turned into a dog down. down. But anything could happen. Mm -hmm. And so when they meet uh, tomorrow, which we're going to be out on the golf course, but I'll be out there with my yeah, 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 right. <laughs> uh, this is going to be an amazing game. I like Caitlin. A lot of people believe that, you know, the reason why the, the world is taken uh, by her in part is because she's a white female, sort of with, with men, there was a great white hope. They see her as the great white female hope. I don't look at her through that lens at all. Uh, I look at Caitlin through the lens of here's a powerful young woman who is a very gracious, uh, she's very respectful yeah. of the game, of the players. She has some nimbleness with her language around race. Yeah. She pulls yeah. for her sisters, you mm -hmm. know, she pulls for them. Uh, she doesn't allow people to just dog out, uh, you know, because what they've been doing with LSU, I mean, I'm really, I don't want to go here today, yeah. but I just, I'll just say that there is sort of crazy, uh, sort of racism and sexism that gets gets thrown at those young women. Yeah. I mean, I was just listening to uh, some announcers yesterday on the radio, ESPN. I listened to these guys. They're hyped up. Uh, white guys, usually they've had a lot of comfort and relationships with people of color, so yeah. they don't make glaring bias mistakes. But yesterday they, they, were, they were in it mm. uh, because they talked about the greatness of Caitlin and they were praising her. And then they said, but... But what's just as powerful as Caitlyn, the grace and the power of Caitlyn being our superhero, with every superhero, you have to have a villain. Mm. And then they describe Reese mm. as the, the villain. villain. Oh, wow. And said, I mean, really? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so it's just like, why? You know, why? why do we have to throw those things in there? Yep. But you know what? It, it's what happens when you get carried away with the narrative. Yep. And you have your unconscious bias that you don't even recognize. Because I I've seen uh, uh, Reese as just a powerful player, uh, but an encouraging player and a strong player and a great player for the game. And uh, you know, but those are just some sidebars. Uh, Tommy, how'd you week go? Yep. So I, I was just saying, talking about the basketball game. We'll turn it to you for your week. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and I don't have much to talk about in terms of my week either, other than. Uh, I just I enjoy this week as I do most weeks. Uh, I, I love the work that we get a chance to do. We're going to start doing some executive coaching and training with the Cincinnati Reds. So I'm excited about that. Uh, we have other clients. I had several meetings. I had one meeting with a, a tech firm, a DEI tech firm, uh, Tommy, and we were talking about you know, pivoting and the, uh, you know, what do we, what does it look like for us right now in this current environment? Yeah. And they were struggling. And, and one of the things you've heard me say, Tommy, as a theme, and I'll throw this at our community, <clears throat> is I say that, that too often, most of us are two things that I think we're experiencing on a regular basis. One is exhaustion. Yeah. Just every day you're exhausted. And so people, if somebody comes to you and says, Hey, you want to join a movement? You're like, what? Join a movement. Are you crazy? I mean, I can't get through my day. And so people are exhausted for one. And then number two, many of us are just used to digging and working harder ourselves. In other words, we don't want to sit back and be dependent upon the rest of the world. Yeah. We know that we got to go get it. But I can tell you that simply trying to go get it by yourself is insufficient to get to where you're trying to go. Uh, in business, they say that only 28% of an organization's success 
is dependent upon the contributions of individuals. Mm. 72% of their success is, is, is based on team and organizational effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And so I think the same thing is true uh, for us as diverse people groups, mm -hmm. is that we keep believing that if I just work hard enough myself, I can get there. And I'm saying we can't. Yeah. But it's so yeah. tempting and it's so desperate. There's so much desperation around survival mm -hmm. that you, you don't even believe anybody that says, mm -hmm. no, 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 stop digging that hole. Come on, let's talk about it for a minute. I'll give you one last analogy because I'm going to repeat these things so that you'll remember some of them. I got a revelation, Tommy, when I was work, doing, a, a, doing a workshop a couple weeks ago where I got this revelation that people are not utilizing the full capabilities of their laptops. So I asked the question, I said, how many of you know that you're not using uh, 50 to 70 percent of the capabilities of your laptop? And every hand went up. And I asked him, I said, how much time do you think you would save yourself in a year if you utilize the full capability of your laptop, all the shortcuts and everything like that? He was probably, you know, a couple months. And an IT guy says, yeah, it's probably two to three months. Mm -hmm. So we think it's a waste of time to learn all the capabilities and shortcuts mm -hmm. of our laptop. Uh, and so we just go on with the limited knowledge. And then in three years, we'll trade up. Yeah. Don't even know how to use this one. Yeah. I'm going to go get a new one, but the new the features, the new yeah. features. What? Don't yeah. even know how to use it. And so I'm saying the same thing is true about people in organizations. Uh, I've had uh, leaders say, I've got 120 people. Eric, I don't have the time to spend with getting to know each of them. I said, well, only get to know the ones that you want to be productive, to really deliver real results. Yeah. The rest of them you can ignore. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Right. And so I'm going to say to you all that we have got to make sure that we are intentionally Tommy, again, something that we'll put on the calendar that we got to check in and put time on thinking strategically about growing yeah. business, Tommy. Yeah, we got to do each it. week, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and not just talking about all the stuff that we're doing. Yeah. I'm so tempted and attracted to doing work that I do not spend enough time, even now, I'm getting better at it, mm -hmm. uh, working on the business and partnering with others because people are the key to unlocking things. Yeah. I was talking to a DEI tech leader and basically he was saying, Eric, I'm up against it so hard. I just don't have time to think about anything else. I said, well, that, was, that fits my motto. Mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. and the reality is that it's hard for me to think about helping you because I'm trying to, mm -hmm. so all discretionary energy I have, there's a temptation to only focus mm -hmm. on, but I told him, I said, you know what? I said, what would you be able to do for me if I brought some real big investors to you? And I hate to ask it like that because that's not my character. My character yeah. is helping just because that, yeah. but we live in a world of limited resource, yeah. limited time and everything. He said, Eric, I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm a businessman. He said, I'm going to give you stocks in the company, that Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to my resources now. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to give you access to some resources that I may need. Yeah. But I really believe, Tommy, that my job is to be a broker mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. Indeed. With investors. Eric, indeed. Because it can help me. It can help them for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I just, it's, it's going to be hard for us to do it. But I'm saying to you all, make intentional time in your schedules to make sure that you're connecting with people and, and partnering with people because it's the only way that we can get there. And I can promise you that we're under so much stress, so much pressure that we're watching our country, yeah. the demise of our nation. We're watching our communities go to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. And we're just sitting back exhausted, throwing popcorn yeah. down. Saying, I, I hope this ends well. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But you are going to answer. Right. Oh, no, not me. Are you crazy? Not me. I can't help saying that. Hey, that, that's a good word, Eric. Again, I am going to own my side in taking and accepting your charge. Yeah, I will. We got to gotta do it. Um, that's one of, I think, the kind of fallacies mm. of entrepreneurs where once we have come to this epiphany mm. to start a business yeah because yeah. typically we start yeah. a business is yeah. not it's not 
necessarily just for other people. Right. It's, Here's an idea I think will help other right, people. Right, right, right. And I'm the conduit. Right. So we're always in that thing yeah, and creativity, yeah, innovative yeah, mode. Yeah. And we're building, building, and we've always pivoted, 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 pivoted. Right, right. And kind of on our own tricycle. Right. right? Say it again. On, on our, our own, own tricycle. tricycle. Right, right. That's it. Our own tricycle. Right. Now we're big on our tricycle, right. and knees are high. Right. And we're still right, right, trying, right, right, trying right, to handle right, it. Right. right. And we look to our left <laughs> and our partner is on a bicycle if not a motorcycle right right no, hold on for a second because i'm going to figure this out i'm, I'm going to get as fancy as you i am i am i just got to work harder yeah yeah look at me look let me look at me he's like no you know we have electric bikes now we just right. oh my goodness that's what our 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 partners uh the others in the community are doing mm -hmm. uh the, the dominant culture they are. They got motorbikes yep. and they got, uh, you know, uh, uh, kites that fly. They got planes yep. and all of that. And we watch their planes while we're on our tricycle. Come on, I'm about to get there. Yep. And they ask questions like, where did you get that? <laughs> right. And how might we build better? Where did you get that bike? Where did you get that well-oiled machine? Right. Right, that's producing an outcome with managed, if not minimum, energy. Right, talking about physical energy. Right, and so we want to. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you, Lydia. Right, that's me on, the on that tricycle. Right, right. Knees right. are high. Right, we're trying to get it. Right, and I think that now we have to have humility. Mm. Mm. And We're getting something here today, and we have to have some some hope and faith. That's right. That in the partnership, that's right. We will not lose. That's right. That's it. And we will not that's lose it. a little bit, but we won't lose all. That's not it. The faith and the hope is that it will get better, and ninety nine percent of the time, it will be better. Right. Right. The one percent that there's a crack, there's a lesson in learning about that. Right. But it's the other ninety nine percent that, oh, I I see it could be easier right. if we partner. Right. Right. And I can get off of this day on tricycle. Right. Right. Because I'm going to be real honest with you all that Tommy and I talk to each other often. And so when Tommy was telling me this week about a big opportunity that's about to close, I'm sitting there listening to him with all the excitement in the world. But he and I are both knowing the challenges that we face in this current environment. Yep. And so we're pulling for each other and we're looking to each other's eyes when we ain't talking to you all. Yep. And yep. we know it's a beast of a world out there. Yep. And so we don't want to find ourselves literally narrating the potential funeral of yep. each other. Come on, Aaron. Supporting each other on our way to a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me about his success, and I felt every part of it. Like, oh, yeah. oh, Tommy, I'm so happy I am. But we have not fully committed to Wonder Twins. Activate. Activate. And God is showing us a way through this. Yeah. Because there's some things that you do not just get by yourself. We say to companies, Tommy. Yeah. That it's not a zero sum game because that's the way they look at it. Yeah. Is that to bring in diverse talent means you're going to have to lose white talent? No, it's not a zero yeah. sum game. Yeah. If you bring in talent, the right talent, you expand the pie. And so mm -hmm. that's what we're going to figure out. And I'm going to tell you this our desire is to figure it out. Our need is a desperation to keep the lights on. Yeah. But God is the miss is the ingredient is the additional ingredient that will help us find that pathway to the kind of collaborations that not only he and I need, but we need across our industry. Because right now our whole industry is a bunch of solo acts. Yeah, everybody sure. just uh, you know, yep. it just doesn't feel like it's enough out there. Yep. It is. Uh, we just have to put our different powers together and benefits from each other's stuff. And, and Tommy and I have the right kind of character and the right kind of confidence in each other 
that we don't worry about whatever else is happening in Tommy's life. He doesn't worry about it. He tells me yeah. something that I'm saying, hey, right. Tommy, why don't you give me all that? Right. No, because I we we love each other yeah. and we're mature to a level. You know, yeah, yeah. And everybody doesn't have that. So that's a good foundation to kind of keep building. So I got a quick statement and then a question. And I know we have some some things to talk about today, but this is good. And thank you, audience, for, for chiming in. Uh, uh, excellent. Excellent. That's hey, what's going on? <laughs> See, baby. So uh, here's my statement and then a question. Uh, my statement is, as I share with you the good news about this potential long-term opportunity, I was thinking two things. One, uh, there's some folks I have to bring on board potentially right. to the company that will literally be doing 90 to 95 percent of the work. Right. They're driving to work. And the other thing I thought about is, uh, in the same vein, how can you and I work together on that project? Mm -hmm. Because uh, some of the work is consulting. Right. And then some of the work is just really administrative, you know, put it out on LinkedIn, get the announcement out, all that good stuff. So I was thinking of that. Here's my question. And I don't want to go too far left. Of, right, right. Of, of but happiness. I like where you're going. Right. I like where you're going, though. I like this. So when you engage with a potential partner and say over some time, you've had some partnerships, and that is, You've had an opportunity, you've brought them on board, right? They get, you know, they're five or 10%, they're doing their work, we're moving forward. That project sunsets, you engage in another project, you think of them, you bring them on board. And so now you're five years in, mm -hmm. when there's an opportunity, you automatically turn to think about that person mm -hmm. or that partner because they offer a particular skill set. Mm -hmm. Skill set that you might have, Eric. Right. But it's better if they if do doing it, you right? can do other things. Exactly. Right. I said it before, Eric. Then when it's not reciprocated. Right. Right. So the partnership, from my perspective, doesn't always feel like a partnership right. in my definition. How do you, I don't want to say address it. What's your thoughts about that? Right. So my thoughts maybe slightly different than yours, but my thoughts mm -hmm. are very clear on this. Uh, number one, when I think about uh, utilizing somebody, it's out of a need for their service. Okay. So for me, that it ends there. Mm -hmm. It ends there. I have a need. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm choosing you is because you can fulfill that need, which allows me to do other things. Mm -hmm. uh, if you never call me back, that's fine. Uh, I, what I realized is that not everybody actually has the same kind of success that I'll have or that you have. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times they can't even, you know. Uh, also, you and I now are a heavier lift. We cost a little more. So yeah, we're yeah. not entry level fees. Yeah, yeah. So if Tommy don't call me because he can find somebody else cheaper to do that, that's what he's supposed to do. Understand that. That's yeah. what he's supposed to do. He's not supposed to call Eric over for a heavy a financial lift. <laughs> right. I mean, come on now. He yeah. gotta be flowing. Yeah. That's when he really gonna call me and say, hey, look, because he's being overrun yeah. with some big money. And he says, I got something that can handle the weight of Eric yeah. and benefit from what he's gonna bring for that. Yeah. So that's what maturity allows you to do. Mm -hmm. That I see that Tommy's got a thing over there, but he's supposed to fill those up with as many people that don't cost what I cost. And then if there's if, if it's an excessive type of thing, then he can call my number. But here's the other thing that Tommy can do with me, and he can know these are the conditions under which we partner. Yeah. When he offers me something, I don't always say yes mm -hmm. if yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. If I can't do it, I say, Tommy, I appreciate that, but actually, I'm not the best person yeah. to do that. Yes, sir. That's when he can come to me. But mm -hmm. if I'm always saying yes, whether I can do it or not. Ooh. Uh, and if I want him to pay me big money, we just heard this in the acting yeah. thing with uh, 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 Taraji and all of them. Yeah. Uh, a black person's trying to do a film. They don't have all the money to pay you. You complaining about that? Well, I mean, come on now. Help him be successful. Yeah. So there's a lot of complexities. It's like uh, almost like a marriage. I tell my children that it's hard to find a significant other. Yeah. It's difficult to find a friend. And it's not always easy to find people to work with. 
But the most important criteria for deciding somebody that you're going to partner with is that they have good character. Character doesn't mean that they're perfect in their lives, mm -hmm. but character means that they have honor, they have integrity, they can say yes and no, and you can have a full-throated conversation with them around what you can pay them, which may be underneath, because I'll do things for Tommy just because. So if Tommy says, this is all I got, that's what I'm gonna do too, you yeah. know? And we work that way with each other. If I couldn't offer Tommy something that's below its rate sometime, then I may not ever be able to, offer anything until we get to bigger places. Uh, so there, there's a lot in that, Tommy. I appreciated that example because it, it allows us to teach our community yeah. around the character yeah. of business and partnering and what makes it difficult for people to ever partner. Yeah, that, that was excellent for me, Eric. I mean, oh, you, you don't know how good that was because I, I've had kind of a duality of thinking about partnership. Right. And I, I need to kind of pull back. My thinking about partnership with you in anything is unthought of. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think about it. No, we're good. Right? Right. Yeah. And so that is how I've been defining partnership that it, it, it shouldn't be, you know, critical on the bottom line. It shouldn't be this. It should be out of integrity, out of shared. Yeah resources yeah, and it making outcome. sense right but in reality um for me as i close out i hire certain people to do a certain job and that could be a person or a business mm -hmm. and that's what i should expect from it right 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 because that's I, it yeah do job. Just, that's do, what do the job. right and if and nothing else ever happens from it that's it and they right. do the job and they do it well right but then I turn around, excuse me, with some personal stuff like, what about me? Throw right. me a bone. Right. No, right. that's you didn't hire me to give it back. Yeah. So we can turn that into, you know, blessings and favor. So do you do you give someone who's in need of a dollar? Do you give them a dollar expecting them right. the right. next time you see right. them or they see you, that's they right. are going to give you a dollar? That's right. Short answer is no. I see that you have a, a sign. You're of need. Right. That's good time. I have abundance. I'm going to give it to you. We're good. Right. Right. I am also faithful that God knows my heart. And I do know, Eric, that he rewards me tenfold. Right. So right. things that I haven't really worked for, That's they it. pop up. That's it. That's it. Say that again, Tommy. Yeah. Say that again. That, 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 that he rewards me tenfold. Tenfold. So I, I may never get it from you. Yeah. And I, I need to say every day. Right. Thank you. Right. Right. Some of this stuff I work for through an RFP proposal or through this referral. Some opportunities, Eric, someone just threw me a couple of dollars. Right. Because with, oh, Lord. Where they were sitting, Eric, they were looking at me, not in my position, but in my energy, in my spirit, mm -hmm. like, oh, Lord, I need some help. Right. And, and their energy said, right. We, I, I see you. Right. I see you. Right. I feel you. Right. Right. And boom, throw me a little $20, 20000 say. Yeah. Oh, that, that covered mortgage. Right. Right. I need that. Rent. That's right. Right. Lord. Like, yeah, just a little thing. I've had that happen right. a number That's of exactly times. That's exactly right, Tommy. And say for for this little work. Right. Right. Because I could do this because I could. Right. Right. No, I got that. Yeah. Oh, I, I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's a, that's important thing. And I'll say one other thing about Tommy and I, our character, and about uh, the concerns that others have. Uh, we've been in this business for a long time. We've established reputation for a long time. Sometimes people may not call upon Tommy and I to help because they're concerned that the client may like us more than they like them. Yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. I, I actually, I'm good with that. Uh, the beauty of Tommy and I is that if I ever do anything on behalf of Tommy, sometimes Tommy's like, e, be your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's, hey, be a uh, make it plain partner. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm never going to ask Tommy not to be CEO of Make It Plain. You know, but he's un, he's here as a you know senior consultant with integrity, but also yeah. as CEO of Make It Plain. But I have no fear that Tommy's gonna go in there and if somebody said, "Oh, Tommy, you're yeah. way sexier than Eric," right. like you, right. Tommy's gonna say, "No, nah, right. that's my boy." 
Anything yep. that you want to do, you got to run it past him. If he ain't good with it, then I ain't good with it. Yep. That's how we are. So we have a high level of trust that each of us is going to be respectful and honorable even in the other's client. Yeah. That's saying a mouthful. I mean, yeah. we had to do a whole show on that because most people ain't there. Yeah. They're not there. But what we wanted to do today, and actually our time is it got away from us, but I'm going to tell you this, that we are going to spend some time now on this theme around happiness. And I was looking at some research from a guy named Sean Acor, uh, and he talks about that the fact that many people, especially entrepreneurs, believe that if I'm successful, then that will bring happiness when just the opposite is true. In other words, if you're happy, it will lead to greater success. So I want you out in the community to take some time to hold those peas in your mouth. That many people, their entire lives, they feel like the reason why I'm disappointed, I'm discouraged, I'm depressed, is because I haven't experienced enough success. And if I were like as successful as Tommy Lewis, I would be happy too. No, that's not the way it works. It actually is the reverse. And you want to focus on being happy first. And then happiness unlocks some things in your mind that allows you to access creativity, innovation, uh, you know, ideas, energy, positivity that turns into uh uh, positive work habits as well. Mm -hmm. So, Tommy, there are uh, seven or eight of these themes that, uh, you know, this person has identified. And I want to just uh, sort of go to a couple of them and ask you your thoughts around them. Only 25% of job success is based on IQ. Some of you may have heard that before. 75% is about how your brain believes your behavior matters, how it connects to other people, and how it manages stress. Wow. Yeah. So, Eric, I I, I understand that because what I, what I think about is for myself, when I was working a job, my my happiness was internal. It came out of my interest of excellence in what I did, mm -hmm. and so that's day in, day out, day in day out, I was called a company man. Mm -hmm. I was trusted. I was reliable. I was honest and full of integrity. Mm -hmm. And so with the work that I was doing on different projects, my happiness is I'm doing it. Right. Delivering. I'm delivering. Just like as an athlete, I used to yeah. work out yeah. to perform in the game. People will come to the game and see me performing, to see me doing certain things and maybe a nice play that had folks stand up, but they didn't know that I was happy in the practicing of that shot. Right. And right. I was hitting the shot. Right. Hitting the shot. Right. So in the game time, when it came time for it, I hit the shot. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I practiced that like a thousand times. Right. Right. I'm, I'm already happy. You're jumping up for joy. Great shot. And I'm like, yeah, you. I thought about it and I delivered it, mm -hmm. just like in golf. Mm -hmm. I visualize it, execute. Right, right. The happiness is I visualize it and I did what I thought I could do. Right. That's in the rigor of the discipline and regularity. And so my, that is what really was my happiness is that the work, it was really my work ethic. Yeah. And yeah. It was me being myself. To right. Be honest. Right. Yeah. And what I love. I'm going to stick with the golf analogy, is that you can't lie to golf. Mm -hmm. Golf knows whether you're happy mm -hmm. or not. It's unbelievable. And when you're happy, which means you're calm, uh, you're expecting mm -hmm. a positive things to happen, you're enjoying the day, mm -hmm. then golf says, I'll leave you to perform the golf moves that are necessary to be successful. Yeah. But as soon as you get stressed, as soon as anxiety takes over, as soon as you start thinking about more of that mm -hmm. than this, it says, yeah. well, we in the trees. Yeah. Here's what this says. Here's what the research says. 
the research is clear that every time you have a success, your brain changes what success means. Mm. Mm. So in other words, your brain is like, well, that's yeah. over. Yeah. It doesn't mean that anymore. What? Well, I just. Wow. No, no. You're never going to be happy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I'm going to keep changing the definition of success. So that means you have to then embrace happiness first. Mm -hmm. And then that will lead mm. to success. Mm. And that success is not your fundamental foundation of happiness. Mm -hmm. Happiness is that. And so it says that that's what happens to a team. So for you and your team, if happiness is the opposite side of success, you'll never get there. But if you increase your level of happiness in the midst of a challenge, in the midst of searching for investment, in the midst of a down economy, what we find is that all your success rates uh, uh, rise drastically, dramatically. So, so your success rates go up dramatically if you start with happiness. Eric, once again, uh, wow. I, I was I was conducting a uh, executive team retreat with a client of ours that uh, we've had for some time. And the executive team only consists of five people, right? And there was one individual who's joining the team. They're new to the team, like six or a little bit less than nine months to the team. And when we were in the mountains of Virginia, as we started the two-day retreat, uh, CEO and, and another person, another person, uh, they all had these inside jokes. They were bantering with one another, mm -hmm. you know, and we were just in a small room, just the six of us all together, five of the leadership team and myself. And I couldn't stop laughing because of their banter right. with one another. Right. I, I knew they trusted one another. Yeah. I knew they understood the limitations of right. the banter. Right. 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 And mm -hmm. even the CEO, you know, he had a couple of slick remarks. Right. And the person he was talking to would crack up laughing. Right. And I was laughing like, I got it too. Right. 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 The newer person, I was observing her. And uh, she is new, so she doesn't have the inside joke. And she was uh, polite. Mm -hmm. She was there looking with attention, but she wasn't smiling or laughing. Mm -hmm. She was really trying to figure out, you know, is he serious? Right. Or is she playing? Or, right. Or, or what? The four of them were happy, right? We come to realize that the new person, she was unhappy because she felt that she was not included an in outsider. the group. Right. An outsider. Not just in that moment, but the nine months prior. Right. And, and so I reframed real time in my head the a couple of activities to move to some happiness deal, uh, happiness activities to gauge one's happiness. Mm -hmm. What makes you happy? Mm -hmm. Right. And we were started to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We went down memory lane. Okay. okay. What makes you happy? Okay. And we and, and then that elevated folks mm -hmm. like, oh, I can talk about or double click on my happiness. Right. And my happiness is not because of you. Right. I would actually like to share my happiness mm. with you. Mm -hmm. That's what will make me happy. Right. Not you making me happy. Right. It's me sharing my happiness. That is a there's a difference That's there. That's good, Tommy. Right. And because I stand, I'm a person, Eric. Contrary to what some people think, Eric, because I'm I'm a thinker. Preach, preach, bro. I'm 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 a, I'm I'm disciplined. Right. I am very happy. Right. Right. Oh, I we am. We have a ball. I am, I am very happy. Right. Uh, I laugh, especially with you. Yeah. And, but I, I'm a happy person. Right. I'm even. Ve I'm very happy when there's a a, a problem or a challenge mm -hmm. with a, a couple of individuals right. or a group. Right. And I'm asked to be a part of the solution. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what is it? Yeah. it? You say it's the end of the world. Right. Bring it to me. Right. 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 I take it. Right. It, it energizes right. me that it's not the end of the world. Right. And we're going to get through this. Right. 
Right. We will. Right. Because I am what he made me. Right. Mm. And so mm. I would say that with teams, the the you know team effectiveness, um, uh, sometimes a reset and a reboot. It's a I think is connecting individuals to themselves and allowing them to uncover their inherent strengths. Mm. And once other people see that, then they can say, yeah, I can see that strength in you. And, and I don't have it. But how, how do you have it? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh yeah. That, I mean, I don't even think about it. You know, mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning. It's like, Hey, let's get it. Right. You know, I right. wake up in the morning and I, my back hurts or my neck hurts, mm -hmm. or I got to respond to these emails where there's a problem. And then now I have a, a froed brow and I wake up in the morning, every morning, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Right. That's a mindset. Right. I wake That's up. That's a choice. That's a choice, E. I wake up in the morning. Hey, it's Saturday. Right. We're going to have this conversation. We got the community. That's right. Right? That's right. As Eric says, it, it could be just you and me, and we're good. And we're good. So... Here's an exercise I'm going to give you all. I'm going to start with and I'm going to ask Tommy to do it as well. That we find that more learning happens not from hearing simple information, but from doing. Yeah. So the doing transforms our brain and helps us to engage in the greatest learning. And so here's what I'm going to give you all community as a challenge. I'm going to invite you to uh, get a partner uh, sometime throughout the day and to take two minutes, each of you, and describe a meaningful experience that you had over the last 24 hours uh, and maybe one that has brought happiness to you. And I'll start with one, Tommy, that I was in a discussion with Judy and uh, discussion slash argument. <laughs> Uh, we started off just talking about the times that we're living in and talking about Stephen Miller. And so I made a comment about him and then she made a comment about him. And then all of a sudden I got a revelation that I thought was an insightful revelation. And when you're ADHD, if you don't say it, it's like, it'll get away. And then you're yep. it's just lost. And so I'm like, Oh, I don't want to lose it. So I said something and, uh, and then Judy took exception to that, as she often does, in saying almost like, well, you changed the subject. Like I was talking about something, then you changed the subject to something else. And I was like, in my mind, I'm going to let you all in on the mind. I was like, why does Judy always do that? Mm -hmm. Conversations are organic. They just <laughs> evolve. And, you know, you might say something and I may, you know, stack that and, you yeah. know, change it, transition, you know. Uh, and then she kept saying her point three to four times, which is all is it's it's common in our disagreements. And then God gave me a revelation. He gave me a revelation that what I did. So Judy was making a comment that I had already made, and I said literally without me knowing it, Tommy. I said no, but like no, that's not it, but. Let Mm. And I didn't even realize that I said no, but, and she didn't, she didn't call me on that. God showed me that I did that. And I said, oh, mm. and so it was like an unlocking, a major key in our common misunderstandings. What I realized is that in my family, that's what we always did. You weren't even speaking to the person's point when you said no, but mm. you were saying, hey, but I got a, mm. an exciting new thing. And I told her, I said, Judy, I said, I just realized that what you've been reacting to is my words that said no, but. Wow. And I said, and the reason why you have to say things three or four times is because I've never acknowledged that I said no, but. And so it, un and here's the thing I think that was so powerful for that for me, is that our ego can talk us into being victims. And it never puts us in the central role of the problem part of the communication. Right. And I got that revelation and she just, 
<laughs> yeah. Because she thought he's trying, because now once I got the revelation, yep. now I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm trying to get in kind of this guy. It's the same. It's the same. She said, no, yeah. I know that move. Yeah. He's trying to argue. <laughs> Another point from Eric. You keep his score. <laughs> no, this time I got something. <laughs> and she was happy to hear that finally. I did have something. <laughs> that was more than two minutes. That you got one. No, that was, that was good, Eric. Right. That was good. Right. Um, I think I think for me is that uh I had the opportunity to go back out to Durango, Colorado. Okay. And uh and so we're wrapping up the academic year with our client who's in education. I love the client, Durango School District 9R. Uh, Superintendent Dr. Chesser, I've got my contact Dr. Giddens, all these good folks, real, real good people. Mm -hmm. uh, this time around, was able to take my wife Penny. Okay, and uh, we go out typically land and kind of spend like five or six hours, kind of decompressing before I have to go to work. Right. So I go to work the same day I land, mm -hmm. and then typically return back the next morning. But this time we we you know, I extended the stay mm -hmm. for an extra day. So we had a full day and we went out to, we decided to go out to a place called uh, Mesa, Mesa Verde. Mm -hmm. And where, uh, for those who are less familiar, it's in the Southwest region of Colorado near Durango. It's uh, the ancient indigenous uh, oh. natives who, uh, who built homes in the cliffs, right. in the caves. Oh, wow. And they date back a few thousand years. <clears throat> so it's, uh, they say it's about an hour and 15 minutes away, hour and a half away. Uh, and, and basically you drive about 45 minutes, you know, kind of working up to the mountains. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go to the mountains. Okay. And I have driven through mountains before. Right. In Colorado, in Virginia, mm -hmm. West Virginia. And for those who have not driven in mountains, you realize it's not a hill. It's it's winding. Scary. It's scary. It's steep. Right. You look to your left right. and it falls 100 right. to 1,000 1, feet. Right. Scary. Right. On the right, there's rocks that are right. falling. Right. It's all that good stuff. And so Ooh. as we're winding up, I, you know, I'm paying attention. It's narrow. You got to kind of right. wind. Right. You got and, all my attention. And I'm, I'm looking kind of like 100 feet to 200 feet ahead mm -hmm. of me. That's where my focus is. So I'm not white knuckling it. Right, close. But I'm close. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> going with it, <laughs> right? I can't see anything. That's right. My wife is in the passenger seat looking it all look, no, looking out. Oh, okay. So when we make a bend around the turn, she looks out and you can just see literally a state away. Mm. Right. And she gets discombobulated. I'm focused on the road. Right. right I'm just right. right here, Eric. And if you're if you could imagine being on a roller coaster, mm -hmm. making the first incline, mm -hmm. getting to the top and you see the entire amusement park. Right. Actually, you see the entire state right. that you're in. Right. And then you start to go down and your eyes focus on the tracks. Mm -hmm. Imagine getting to the top. Seeing the open, mm -hmm. going down, you just see the open. Make the turn, you just see the open. So everything you see is like, when right. when am I gonna fall off? Right. And my wife experienced some anxiety. Right. Unbeknownst to me, I was happy in myself that when she first said, "Tommy, I need you to slow down," I just slowed down. Mm -hmm. Usually, right. I, I, Eric, you got this. Let's go. I, I got it. I know my turns, right. you know, whatever. Going 35, 40 miles per hour, getting in the lane. It says speed limit is 45. I'm at 45. I'm hitting it. Mm -hmm. She says, slow down. I slowed down to like 30 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And when I did, when I slowed down, I could see clearly, right? Because I, when I'm going 45, right. I got hug. Right, 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 right. I'm going 30 miles per hour now. Couple of cars come behind. I move over, let them go. Yeah, right. And my happiness is my happiness that I experienced is I I can I can do. 
you know, I hope that makes sense. Something that's different than what my standard is. Yes. And that's it. That's significant. That's it. Yeah. Those are insights. I can respond. Right. So she says, slow down. My, my behavior was, I can. Mm. Where otherwise, right. it would be, I got it. Right. Not, I can. Don't tell me how to drive. Not, I, I can't help you. Right. Don't tell me. I, no, I just. Sometimes we have to slow down and smell the roses and be happy. Well, man. Tommy, what's going on, man? Hey, we didn't say when you get older, Christmas comes every other week. That's what Tommy and I are saying. I mean, these shows are just flying by. We really appreciate you all for joining us today. Next week, we're going to change our time. So I believe we'll start at 11 o'clock next week because we're going to be at a building generational wealth conference. We've yep. been invited to be there, Tommy and I. We'll have the show there. That means we'll have you there. So Terry Cooley, uh, it'll be later for you. Yep. So now you don't have to get up at 7 to 6 a.m. <laughs> uh, to be following us to show. We're going to be a, a couple hours later, hour and a half later. And uh, again, want to thank you for joining us. Tommy, last words? Yeah, again, I just want to reiterate the next next week's show starts later. We may run a little bit longer right? because we'll be having some uh, impromptu interviews. That's our expectation. We'll be talking about wealth. Uh, I would like to, we would like to invite everyone to spread the news about next Saturday's right. show. That's right. Uh, because That's it's not just us. It will be some experts who are coming to this conference right. to talk about wealth. That's right. And, and, and so we want to do that. I would like to also invite anyone in the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area who's interested in the HR space, human resources. I have an opportunity that has come my way for the director of human resources and we're looking for talent. And so I would invite you all, if you have you yourself are in this area or you know someone that is, to simply reach out to me Sorry for the plug here, Eric. No, no brother. Uh, awesome. uh, you can Absolutely. reach out to me at info, I-N-F-O, at M-I-P-C-L-L-C.com. That's info at M-I-P-C-L-L-C.com. We're looking for talent to fill this director of human resources position with a fantastic organization. And so with that, I would like to say thank you for joining us again on, an, on this installment of Diversity Conversations. We'll see you next week at a different time, the same bat channel. Take care. Take care.